Hello, Vibers. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like to understand perspective, if you like creativity, if you like filmmaking, if you like music, if you like pole sports slash dancing, strange combination I know, you're going to love this one. And it's short and sweet. This one only goes for about 25 minutes. I spoke to Michelle uh, Pretorius on how making films has changed her perspective. Her current project involving Australian pole sports athletes in cans <laughs> and how creatives should just do it. Uh, it's a really, really interesting take. She's quite a successful indie filmmaker. She's formed Thinking Owl Films, although she's currently uh, back in South Africa where she kind of comes from. But it's a really great chat, pretty broad ranging and a fantastic perspective. So make sure you stay, this, uh, stay with this one to the end. Obviously, like, share, comment, tell your friends. But again, creators, filmmakers, pole sports people, uh, anyone who's just interested in sort of what the eclectic is really going to interest it, be interested in this one. But hey, less from me, and let's hear from the guest. You make docos, documentary films. Um, you've made you've made a few now. You're kind of good at it. Tell me about that. Um, I like making documentaries. I love sort of getting interested in stories, you know, sort of around me. Um, in my environment and then seeing myself or seeing you know the world through someone else's eyes yeah well, I just really enjoy the, film, the art form well that leads me directly it's, uh, in, into the next question how has making these films changed the way you see things and look at the world I think you always grow through the film with your character and try to you know you really start to understand their world and learn more and more and get quite absorbed into it um, and it definitely changes your perspective on things and you learn the sort of process of the film. Yeah. So, yeah, especially the one film I did, um, which was a music documentary um, called The Springbok Nude Girls. I sort of learned a lot about the feeling of, you know, the youth of a specific time at a crucial time in South African history, which was the fall of apartheid. Mm -hmm. and how people felt at that time and how they expressed themselves. So, yeah, it definitely changes your perspective. Okay. So <laughs> I'm sorry, the, the Springbok Nude Girls, so they were a band, that's correct? Yes, they were a band. Um, okay. Very controversial at the time in 1994, sort of when apartheid fell in South Africa. Mm -hmm. So they were youth who could suddenly, like, express themselves. It wasn't that sort of restrictive environment um, where, you know, you were controlled by all sorts of rules and very much by religion and preconceived ideas. So they broke free from that and expressed themselves. They were Afrikaans kids, but they expressed themselves in English mm -hmm. um, to have sort of a more international audience. So, yeah, I think I learned a lot through them about that time in my life when I was sort of 18, 19 years old and I just started university. I was actually a big fan of them when I was in university because they were in the same environment as us, you know, as me. Um, and I guess I was a little bit of a super fan. And then years went by and, you know, starting to work and all those things. And then... I got the opportunity to meet one of them and just suggested the idea of a film to kind of explore that time. And strangely enough, nobody else had done that film yet, even though they were so popular. And that specific time in history where there was so much political change. So, yeah, I wanted to explore that whole perspective of um, how kids felt at that time, um, young people sort of at the cusp of you know adulthood and where they're going to with their lives and they were so restrictive or restricted in the past so now they could do absolutely anything they wanted to do they could travel overseas which they couldn't do amazingly before and just broaden their horizon so much and it was amazing you know the movement that came out of that it was quite wild which was interesting you know, sort of over the years when I first met this band, I sort of started to interpret what I felt about them and what, you know, what I thought kind of came out of this whole 
movement and what it meant to me mm -hmm. um, in my own life. Um, and I could very much identify that because I came from that group of people yeah. that was sort of very uh, liberal and wanted to embrace the world and wanted everybody to take part in South Africa and not just specific groups. So from that perspective, I wanted to make this documentary, not just about a band that was extremely popular and used drugs and was wild and made great music. Um, I wanted to explore sort of the postmodernism in their music. Mm. Um, and there was, there was a lot of meaning to that, um, that I went sort of into deeper, but it was very much about understanding my, the politics of that time and my perspective on what I was actually living through. Cause I was living through a historical experience that kind of the world was aware at that stage, cause it was so controversial. And actually, when I think about perspective now, a few years later, I would actually love to, if I had the means to make a documentary about sort of, because this was very much out of my own perspective as a white person and how we grew up and how we changed over time. I would have loved to make a documentary about that similar age um, person in, say, the black culture or, you know, a different group of people or say the Indian guys in South African, because we have a lot of, we have a big population of Indian people as well to make like a documentary from their perspective and learn more about that and how they felt. And that would challenge sort of, you know, it would expand my horizons and challenge the things I believed in and see how other people see it. So right now that type of thing would interest me. What got you, what got you into docos? And specifically, the biggest leap is going from nothing to something. So, you know, a, mm. a lot of people I know are going to be watching this thinking, wow, you know, this lady's done this amazing thing. She's made these and I'll be putting the hyperlinks to your work there for people to, for people to see rather, rather than showing it as, as we go along. But going from something is like, oh, I've got this great idea. I've got this story I want to tell. And then making it happen. Like, how did you do that? How did you go from idea and head? to finish products like from from nothing to something that's quite an interesting point because i think you know lots of people have ideas mm. and they have great ideas but they never actually go and make it mm. and there's i guess a certain group of people who just go ahead and it's such a calling for them to make that thing right. that they just have to go over into actually you know making that mm. and for me it became so strong that um I actually just picked up my little camera, my little video camera and the very first documentary I made and just did it, you know, just jumped in and just did the documentary. And from there, that discipline kind of flowed from, from the one to the next. And I realized, oh, if I'm interested in this, I can explore that. Or, you know, why not tell the story kind of from my perspective and from other people's perspectives? And it's just kind of a strong urge that you have to do it, that you want to tell that story. It's about storytelling, I guess. Yeah. And I love, I love reading and I love books and, you know, I love, that's what I grew up with as a child, a lot of reading. So that was kind of a natural outflow of that. Just do it. That's really cool uh, because, um, you know, I've spoken to a lot of writers. I've spoken to a lot of, uh, not a lot, actually a few filmmakers. Um, and creators generally, so your artists, people like Hayley Gillespie and, and theatre people. And broadly speaking, there are two broad groups of, of creators. There are planners, so people who sit down and like they'll plan stuff. It's like, right, I want to tell this story. I'm going to use it in this way and stuff like that. And it's not that they, it's not that they won't have a degree of flexibility with that, but they've got a plan. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's like, you know, Elf, I'm going from A, I'm going to end up at point B. And then we then there are a group that we call the pantsers. That is the people that fly by the seat of their pants. They kind of like, well, let's just dive in and just do it. Let's just like see where this see where this takes us. And the journey is is part of the end product. Which category are you? Um, I would actually say I'm a little bit of both. I start off by having sort of a specific idea, which is my perception of the whole thing. Yeah. But then I feel like the the art of documentary, and that's exactly what's so interesting about it and kind of makes it very complicated, I think, in a way, is that it takes its own life. Um, 
it it inevitably takes you down roads that you didn't necessarily think it was going to take you mm. you know it highlights different things and you've got to adapt to that and mold the story around that yeah. and especially in the edit you've got to kind of find that story sort of post what happened whereas for example like a feature film or something you know a normal fictional film there's a very specific plan of how it's going to go this is the story and that's how it's going to go but with documentary it's not it's not like that um it it kind of has a life of its own so i would plan initially okay i want to do this and ask these questions and then when i talk to the character it takes on a whole life of its own yeah then it starts to really shape and then i kind of fly by you know i just go and just dive in it's really funny because you know really these projects take on a life of their own yeah i would say so um i, I think ever since childhood i had this thing of every person sees things from a different perspective yeah. and I want to understand the perspective they see it from because then you'll understand why they did something, mm. you know, because people differ from us all the time, different cultures, different religions. So if you know the backstory and you explore that whole world of that specific character, then, um, then you see it from their perspective and you can explore it from that way and it's kind of nothing makes nothing is right or wrong it's perspective yeah you know yeah. well yeah no <laughs> I, I, right I, or wrong I, I, right. I know what you mean i mean there there is an overarching i mean we all live in an overarching idea of like you know things are acceptable and not acceptable like to pick an example entirely at, at random apartheid is an evil bad system but like you know again it's not about getting judgy if you just want to understand people you just want to you just want to go and talk to them and I, I empathize with that and i understand you've made a film about um a mate of mine agnishka uh ringer tell us about that yes i really that's an incredible character i used to rent a flat from agnishka and i just started to get to know her and i just admired her so much and i wanted to tell her story um she is an incredibly strong interesting person she's a policewoman and a very very good one I think now she's like almost at the top of her structure at the moment like she's yeah it's incredible um and pole, she's a pole dancer Polish immigrant which also interests me hey yep. pole dancer she's a pole. and that was the thing I could not believe I saw this on her Facebook I saw the pole dancing and I was like what are you doing are you a pole dancer as well I was quite like wow a police woman who's also a pole dancer <laughs> And then she told me about the whole thing that she actually does pole sports. Yeah. Um, so it's not quite pole dancing, it's pole sports. It's a very serious sport. And they're trying to get into the Olympics. Uh -huh. um, and she competes in all these competitions and stuff. And then I started joining her and filming her in her practice and stuff. And it's so hard to do. It's a very, very hard thing to do. Um, she is very talented. Uh, I went with her to a competition and just the amount of attention she draws. She had these braided dreadlocks on and she's this tall, blonde woman who just, the crowd just loves her. She's just incredible. Yeah. yeah so I followed her around and read about sort of her story, um, a documentary, and we're still working on it in terms of it's done, but I would love to get some more funding for it and do some more stuff on her story yeah I mean so she's when, a great great asset to the community and as an immigrant contributing all of that to Australia is really amazing I really you know the stuff that I've seen of yours is uh, a lot of music based stuff and you do really really well mixing music with humor I find myself a lot in the music scene I guess because it's um I love music so much but it just happened that I found my outlet in the music and I'm, but besides the music, it's the characters behind it that interest me mm -hmm. and the funniness and the experience being the kind of fly on the wall situation behind it. And these are very entertaining people usually. So it ends up quite funny and humorous. Um, yeah, I'm very interested in music, but to be honest, I, have done a few sort of more 
socio emotive economic type of things which isn't on the web and you know it isn't anywhere to be seen and i would like to get more into that because i'm actually a very sort of serious person who think a lot about stuff like that and it just happened like for some reason that music kind of brought the perfect balance of being a bit more light and enjoying things but still being able to delve into things it recently, I made a documentary about a band that I worked very much with about COVID and they actually canned the documentary because it was too deep and too honest for them to actually release, which was devastating for me because that's kind of the thing I would love to do. But that's what I kind of find frustrating with music in a bit. They always sort of want to maintain their reputation and they're quite precious about that. Yeah. The brand. They only want to show what they really want to show. Yeah, the brand. And look, you know, you you kind of understand that, but you've hit on something really interesting there. You can yeah. delve into really deep subjects through humor and through music. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. Um, and I found a perfect partner as well in uh, that documentary you refer or the feature film you refer to, the mockumentary, Stone Cold Jane Austen. Um, and the guy is very funny. The director is a very funny person and we just um, clicked in that way and it was working with all the music characters and the scene that I knew. So um, that was absolutely great. He was so funny. Um, that's actually him yeah. on the image there, so, John yeah. Savage. There, there's there's got there's limits to what I can actually show with copyright and all that kind of stuff. So I find if I play stuff like it ends up, it ends up getting smashed or, or taken off by Facebook. So I'm like, <laughs> but what I'll do is I promise hand on heart, yeah. all the, all the hyperlinks, um, all, all the hyperlinks will go in there. And I recommend that actually. So stone cold Jane Austen for people that are out there. It's really funny. What it's about is these, <laughs> these two English speaking guys who live in South Africa. Who want to do like an Afrikaans band? They don't speak Afrikaans. It's so funny. It's just like I was in stitches watching it. It's just like you got to anyway. You got to, hand on heart. Hyperlink will go in there. You got to see it. But like, yeah. But again, like, I'm was, so glad you enjoyed it because huh? it's it's very much kind of I guess a niche market type of film. You know, um, you kind of have to be South African to understand it to some extent, but maybe because you've had South African friends and stuff, you understand it. We hoped it would sort of translate more internationally. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it was a funny and very entertaining film. That's for sure. I mean, conceptually, I mean, are, are you going to get a lot of the in jokes being South African? Yeah. But um, like the, the concept of like a whole bunch of English speaking guys who don't speak, we love this language, man. And we want to sing in it. But we, we, <laughs> and then we the, the play on because this language suddenly became so popular, you know, that they want to catch that whole wave, and it just doesn't work out for them so well. Yeah, it's a form of Dutch, anyway. It's yeah. kind of funny. And Stone Cold Jane Austen. It's like <laughs> Austin. Yes, he worked on so. Where many... do you get that name from? It's so funny. He worked on so many different yeah. levels. Yeah, well, my I... director friend has a wacky brain definitely <laughs> all right well um we'll kind of like we're actually we're coming towards the end but i'll get you to say like is there any funny slash dangerous slash stupid on set steps uh, on set stories that you can share with us <laughs> i mean if there's copyright or whatever it is or you know i would say just sort of off the top of my head with musicians and film people the world can get quite wild and i'm not really that wild so once I was filming a concert with this group that I was following around everywhere in the world, and I got this cameraman who was a good friend, but he never really worked for me before. And he ended up at the end of the shoot being so drunk. The band made him so drunk with absence. Um, he ended up in the crowd, like dancing and kissing girls and all sorts sorts of things because the band was such a bad influence on him and after that I screened my cameraman very well and like stay away from the band they're not a good influence on anyone I've never yeah, drunk it but I've, I've heard it's I've heard it's kind of wild it's a bit terrible 
right. Terrible, terrible. It's terrible. He lost his mind for a while. Is, hey? Isn't it hallucinogenic? Yeah, probably. Probably. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I lost him there for a while. <laughs> I find that I have a lot of friends who are creative, but they don't step over into actually doing it. Um, just go with it. Just do it. That's all I can say. Just go jump, do it. Rather know, I always say to myself, rather know that you tried it and you experienced the whole thing in the process. And whether you fail or succeed, it's about the process. It's about what you learn from the whole thing. Just jump, do it. It's very rewarding. Yeah hard which is good yeah yeah and the second time will always be better like the first time you shoot yeah it, you're never going to hit the target you know what i'm saying you always learn i mean i didn't have any formal training or anything i just picked up a camera so and i'm still not very good at it but somehow i manage i'd respectfully disagree with the not very good at it bit like i, I love your stuff <laughs> It's a really simple message and very consistent throughout uh, pretty much all the creatives I've ever spoken to. Just do it. And I know there's a couple of creatives uh, watching. Thanks for the likes. Uh, thanks for the little love hearts that, that people are giving me. I hope you guys enjoyed that as much as I do. Um, if anyone knows anyone that can assist with funding to keep that project going, make sure that you uh, get in contact with me. Uh, she just needs help with the editing and all that kind of stuff. But like this film about this policewoman who dances, who's a pole dancer, and it's just like, yeah, you know, I have to declare an interest. Agnieszka, the subject of that film, is a really close mate of mine, and, uh, yeah, I could tell you some stories about her, so I might even assist with the documentary, Agnieszka, and I know you're probably going to hear that. But thank you so much. See you guys next week. If you've got any, uh, if you've got anyone you want me to talk to, make sure you get in contact with me through the Facebook.